hello everyone welcome to knowledge circle now we are going to solve the section b of icsc computer application 2024 paper in section b there are six question in examination you all have to attempt four only here i have we have done all the six question let's begin with the very first question question number three here we have class specification question where details of the class is given class name courier name weight address bill and type these are the variables and there is also a variable of a character type d where we have to ask user whether the courier is domestic or international user has to enter d for domestic and i for international and uh, we have three methods here one is accept to take input one is calculate and one is print the criteria is already given so let's quickly go uh, with the solution of this um, program okay so this is the solution let's begin it uh, because we have to take input from user so import java.util.scanner class name as per the question courier see name and address will be of string type and uh, weight and bill will be of integer type and the type of the courier that, that is domestic and international will be of character type so let's begin the very first method void accept where we'll create the object of scanner class and uh, then we'll ask user to enter the name of customer we'll store in the variable n name and then address of the customer in the address variable then we will ask user to enter the weight of the parcel which we will store in the variable weight and then all we will ask at the last that what type of courier it is domestic or international that we will store in the variable type and by using the next method and then dot caret zero now the very important thing is the calculate work as per the criteria if you look at the criteria i'll just show the criteria once the criteria is the criteria is uh, the uh, first 5 kg for first 5 kg the bill is 800 rupees per kg so that's why we have done bill equal to if weight is lesser or equal to 5 bill equal to weight into 800 else if if the weight is uh, it is asked in the second one it is saying next 5 kg so next 5 kg means uh, that is between 6 to 10 so what it will be if the weight is more than 5 kg and if the weight is lesser or equal to 10 kg then what we will do for first 5 kg our rate is different for first 5 kg the rate is different and for the next 5 kg how we will know that how many uh, next uh, remaining weight is there so we will subtract weight minus 5 and whatever answer comes whatever the result comes that will be multiplied with 700 same process we will follow the third one is what above 10 kg so above 10 kg means for first 5 and the next 5 the rate is different so for first 5 we have used 800 rupees per kg for the next 5 we we have written here 700 rupees per kg and above 10 that, that's why we have subtracted weight minus 10 and that rate for that will be 500 rupees per kg so in this way we calculate the bill but there was one more thing in the question if you see that you have to ask user that what kind of courier if it is international courier then 1500 more will be charged see i have used here switch but uh, in switch i have taken only single case i have not taken domestic because for domestic there is no additional charge so i have written here case i bill equal to plus equal to 1500 means additional 1500 rupees will be added now let's go to the void print system dot out dot print and customer name address weight parcel and bill is printed and then main function and we have created the object of the class courier and we have called all the three methods now we'll go and see the execution let's see the execution of this program in bluej let's right click and void main enter the name of the customer so i have entered here when the address of the customer i have entered gazipur and then after enter the weight of the parcel that i have entered in kg that is seven then after the type of courier international i and the bill is printed let's go to question number four question four, question number four is based on overloading we have to define a class and where uh, the name of the method is perform first one is uh, double return type is double where we have to calculate the curved surface area of cone okay and in second we have to print the given pattern number of rows and columns 
will be passed as an argument and third one is we have to ask two numbers m and n if it is see if the character is entered q then we have to find quotient if it is r then we have to find the remainder so let's quickly go with solution here we have to only define it there is no uh, main function in that so that's why we have begun here double perform double r and double h first we have to calculate the value of l that is uh, for the slant uh, line okay the man dot sqrt r into r plus h into h we have calculated the value of l and the we have to calculate what we have to calculate pi r else so curved surface area so pi value i have put 22 upon 7 multiplied r multiplied l and this value has to be returned so that's why i have written return statement let's quickly go to the second one void perform int r and c r for row c for column so the first loop outer loop it will go up to r means it is uh, passed as argument so it depends on that how many rows it has to run then second loop it is responsible for the column printing j2 j equal to 1 and up to c what is to be printed j to be printed loop closed then we have to change the line in the uh, outer loop so that the line will be changed and then the outer loop closed there is no return type void so we will just simply close the method third method void perform we have three arguments first number second number and a character okay if the character is q then number will be divided and the quotient will be returned again i have used if if it is capital r then remainder has to be given so model is operator so this was question number four question number five we have to define a class where we accept a number from user and we check whether it is even pal or not even pal number is what that which is palindrome and the sum of its digits is an even number so let's quickly go with the solution see we'll create uh, we'll write the very first statement import java util dot scanner because we have to take input class is created main function scanner class object then enter a number number is stored in the n variable n then i have declared some variables here num i have temporarily i have stored the input given in number by user then for reverse i have taken r e v as 0 initially 0 and one i have taken sum of digit s as 0 so we have run the loop here while n is greater than 0 we have um, done the modulus and we got the digit in d and then we have written the code for reverse reverse equal to reverse into 10 plus t and one more statement for finding the sum of digit s plus equal to d and the number is divided by 10 so in this way what happens uh, when n gets 0 you will get the reverse number and you will get the sum of digit now if the reverse is original to num num means we have temporarily stored in n so if reverse and originals are same it means that, that is palindrome and that i have used and operator so two conditions are there for even pal that number has to be uh, palindrome also and the sum of digit has to be even so that's why i've written sum of digit divided modulated by 2 is equal to 0 if there is no remainder it is even so if both conditions are true then it is even pal otherwise it will become not even pal let's right click void main enter the number one to one it's a even pal number question number six we have to define a class to accept uh, values into an integer array of four into four okay and if uh, the sum of the both diagonals left and right if both uh, sum of the both diagonals elements are equal then it is known as what it is known as diagonal array so let's quickly go with the solution question six import java util scanner class is created public static void main and we have created an uh, uh, double dimensional array a double dimensional array with this uh, size four into four i have taken two variables c1 as zero and c2 as zero uh, to calculate the sum of the left and right diagonals so we'll give a message enter the elements of four by four matrix user will give we will store by using the nested loop first loop is responsible for number of rows second loop is responsible for number of columns input is given by the user now we will display the matrix given by the user once we will display the entered matrix uh, the same process nested loop will run and the uh, matrix will be displayed the array will be displayed now it's time to find the sum of left and right element. so first uh, we'll find the left one and then we will find the right one see uh, the con condition what is to find the element which are uh, which are on the left diagonal if the value of i and j is equal the index indices of i and j is equal 
then that element has to be added so that is what c1 equal to c1 plus mij to find the sum of right diagonal we have to look for what the sum of indices of i and j should be equal to one lesser than the length of the uh, array so that's what i had did i plus j is equal to three and the length is four so one lesser than that and if it is that then that element value has to be added into c2 means the right diagonals sum will be found and at the end of the loop we'll compare c1 and c2 if both are equal if left diagonal sum and the right diagonal element sum is equal then the message will be it's a diagonal array otherwise what will be message the message will be that it is not a diagonal array so we'll see it by uh, running it into the blue j let's go to blue j right click void main enter the elements of the 4 by 4 matrix so let's quickly enter the uh, elements of the matrix 3 4 2 3 5 2 5 2 3 and then 5 3 2 7 1 3 7 1 you can see the matrix is displayed and it's a diagonal array question number seven is we have to define a class named pin code and store them uh, given pin code in a single dimension array so already uh, pin codes are given no input is to be taken in this question so we'll declare a, um, an array of single dimensional uh, one dimensional array and we'll store these variables the values and we will sh short uh, we have to sort them into ascending order okay so let's quickly go with solution as you can see the class name is pin code public static void bin uh, the single dimension array i have declared the name of rsp i have stored those values first i have displayed the given pin codes which is uh, by default the values are given and then after i have done the work of sorting you can see that uh, what we have done we have displayed it first okay after displaying it we have done the work of sorting you can see here the very first loop is zero it will go up to length minus one uh, because we have to do ascending order that's why we will determine the minimum the minimum one that is what int main equal to ice initially the very first value we have determined as minimum then we have started second loop the the concept of selection sorting says that what that we have to compare the first value with all the remaining values if we get something um, lesser than the minimum which we have determined then that will be initialized into that minimum like if p j p j is lesser than p m uh, p min then that will store that will be stored in that min variable so when the inner loop close we have to swap the value the swapping process is done so in this way what happens that selection sorting is done and at the end what we have to do we will display the pin codes after sorting Print, uh, then displaying work is done so let's go to blue j right click void when you can see here the given pin codes and the sorted pin codes are displayed the last question of this uh, question paper we have to define a class to accept the gmail id and check for its validity see uh, id will be valid when it contains at the rate symbol dot and gmail and com remember it it should not have any space okay so we are going with the solution it's quite simple question so we'll we will um, create the class and then main function we'll ask user to enter the gmail id uh, remember it it is uh, an email id cannot have space so that's why we have used next method not next line so we have stored it in the variable s i have taken four extra variable a c t and g as zero why because to use as a flag or as a counter to count it is used as a flag to check whether these characters and the words are present or not so we have run the loop that is from zero to less than length uh, we have extracted the character the very first character and we are comparing whether it is uh, alphabet that is at the rate if it is at the rate then a plus plus if it is dot then d plus plus if it is c then we are checking the next two characters whether they are o or m or not if they are o and m then it will be c plus plus and in the same process for the uh, suppose we got a character as g so we are looking for the next four characters whether they are m a i l or not if it is g m a i l continuously then g plus plus okay and uh, in this way we will close the loop see if a is one c is one d is one and g is one if these things are found then only the value will increase as uh, it will come to one otherwise it will be remain zero if it is one all four together one then it's a valid gmail id else it's not a valid gmail id click void main and uh, the messages enter the gmail id so i'll enter on the gmail id here v i n a y k 95 at the rate of gmail.com so 
let's press enter after that whether it is valid or not so when we press enter we get it's a valid gmail id let's clear it and let's re-execute the program and let's give us uh, one space and let's check so void main i have written here vinavi space at the rate gmail.com so what do we find we find that it's not a valid gmail id